Hey everyone and welcome back. Did you catch last week's episode where we actually spent Canada Day downtown Victoria and we surfed our way into Sydney Spit and caught some crab. It was such an awesome weekend. Hey everyone, we're the Carmina family from Victoria, BC, Canada. Last year we decided it would be a great idea to move on to a boat, but not just any boat. We found a 1969 Stevens Brothers aluminum boat that needed a lot, and I mean a lot of love. Of course, we decided it'd be fun to make all the repairs and do the refit ourselves. After 19 years of marriage, this may be the end of us. Join us on our adventures cruise in the Pacific Northwest and getting Tango Rotor ready for a massive trip around the world. Another issue we have on this boat, you know, with the multitude of other issues that we're trying to fix, is these locker doors. So they're using indoor hinges on them, which are horrible. You can see them doesn't work at all none close anymore so Blaine was like well I'll make some CNC hinges but then our friend Brian came over he came over he's a pretty smart guy he's like why don't you just create a ledge on the bottom and use one big hinge on the top and then when you need to get in the lockers the whole cover comes off hello freaking brilliant like talk about getting someone just to look at something and think outside the box it'd be awesome to have these actual removable and this is just going to be so much easier to fix these. So that's what we're gonna do. Like, Brian, you're friggin' brilliant. Thank you. you say, I you friggin' nailed it. What'd you do? I just made it's level. And not level with the bottom of the boat, it's level with level. Wow. And what is that? <laughs> Who's a badass? 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 Blaine is. Blaine is. Blaine's a badass. Blaine's a badass. That's the side rail, side rail for for the shelves, and then there'll be okay. a front and a rear as well. So these are the front and rear rails, and then I'll come back in here after, and I'll make reinforcements for the middle of this back rail, and then I'll have more angles like this that'll go there to support the centers of the shelf, and these are basically supported from the Top down. I thought they were stripper poles. Except they're like flat and that would hurt places. They're wobbly but they don't need to be firm because they all firm up once we get everything on top of it. So check out the video where I was sitting on the floor in here crying because I was just overwhelmed. And now, and now I'm singing, he's a badass, he's a badass. Who knew? Like a year later, I don't think it's been a year. Six months later, I'd be doing if that. If I say I'm going to get something done, I'm going to get something done. There's no need to nag me every six months. But that's what I do. He doesn't like to be nagged. Blaine's been working on the shelves all day. Let's go check how he's doing. Hello. Whoa, can't see a thing. I know it's getting darker once I get these up because it's blocking the light from the, from the portholes. I have to get lights in here again soon. There is a shelf here. Shelf. This looks really good, Blaine. Yeah, it's turning out really well. Nice and solid, which is what I wanted. So yeah, let's see if we can. Okay, people, let's see. Okay, see? Solid shelves. Good job, Blaine. This is like a bunk. We can make bunks here. That's what I said. Good. We have a lot of guests coming right now for salmon, steak, prawns. What else do we got going on? Corn, potato salad. Chris is already drinking. This should surprise no one. Hello, McKittrick family. I wish you guys could have smell vision because seriously, garlic and butter and these fresh prawns that I caught, oh, they are so yummy. Family dinner night on board. Yeah, no. Ooh. Corn, steak, fresh caught salmon from Yukulit. We yeah, already had prawns for appies. Greek salad. So again, am I moving? Oh, you're here. I am. 
We had a couple extras for family dinner also. We had two boats rafted up to us, Heather with Mischief, and our Uncle Chuck, who we haven't seen in forever on White Night 2. You good? No, the only way I was going to get a dog at all. It's a sailboat again! It's a mast! <laughs> it's a boom! Can you tell I'm a sailor at heart? Heather and I went on board White Night 2 with Uncle Chuck to pull up our prawn traps because he's got a prawn puller that he wanted to show off. So you've seen Blaine pull up the prawn trap and he's usually like using a heck of a lot of muscles. Look at what Chuck's doing. He's being a show off. Look at the little fingers. So need a prawn puller. And look, we're tailing into our own bucket now. No more knots. Never again. Life is good. Now, if only we could catch some prawns. We've been slimed. You've been slimed. So what's it from, Chuck? I've never seen that. It's from a snake, but that long. Really? A slime eel? Great, yes. And this is what he does, they slime. We got slimed. It's like Ghostbusters, and but it's full of friggin' squat lobsters. He's gotten out, so he didn't stay in. Thus he'd be sliming right now like crazy. He can slime almost a three gallon bucket. Wow. Yeah, so these are all terrible. squat lobsters, which are horrible. Why you drop it in your tender? And we just chuck those. Because there's not much in there. Oh, there's a couple. No, I think they're all squat lobsters. That wasn't very good. And we've been slimed. Prawns. Look how big that is. It's a big prawn. This can feed like four people. Not quite. Three people. One of my favorite things on Tangaro is to watch members of the Sawit Nation practice in the war canoes. They're absolutely amazing. Probably wondering what I'm doing. Well, Janice had the opportunity to go on Uncle Chuck's boat, which is the White Knight 2, right? She is a, what is she again? 41.6 Cooper. A 41.6 Cooper. Lovely boat, quite beamy, tons of room in it. He's lived on board for about 25 years, but Uncle Chuck was heading north back to Squamish. And I was like, I've always wanted to go to Gibson's because I grew up with the beachcombers and you have to be Canadian to know what the beachcombers are. It was so cool, Relic and Bruno and Jesse. And anyways, I grew up with that. Um, and I really wanted to go to Gibson's. I've never been there. And Uncle Chuck was heading that way and I kind of had some time off. So I was like, want to ride or uh, can I hitch a ride? It was like, yeah, let's go to Squamish. So I want a sailboat heading to Squamish. I've left Blaine back on the boat Josh is working and Izzy's at Bible camp. And so everybody's having, out and about. Having breakfast tomorrow at Molly's Reach. We're having breakfast tomorrow at Molly's Reach. Don't worry, you'll see it on video. It's awesome. But right now we've got the sails up. I got that magical sound that I haven't heard in 20 something years since I've been on sailboats where you turn off the engine and it's just like your whole body just goes. <sighs> it's just, yeah, it is so hard to explain that feeling when everything just shuts down and it's amazing and we do have molly the dog on board which is awesome but captain chuck is right here and we are heading towards squamish going up through where are we going you through first thing on it's okay where are we going through first uh we're gonna go up into maple bay yeah we're going up through maple bay between salt spring and the island and then we are timing holier pass for 2 30. for 2 30 because you don't want to head through there because I think eight o'clock tonight or like four o'clock tonight was like seven knots. Can you imagine going through the past seven knots? But yeah, that's why I'm on a sailboat right now and I've left Tanga and Blaine and Izzy and Josh back in Brentwood Bay. When we lost steering, we went around in circles. We had to get this mainsail down fast. And that was because we were driving and tacking and putting a lot of stress on it. 
It had been a long time since I flaked a sail on a boom, but it kind of came back fairly quickly. And then Uncle Chuck went to work to try and figure out what was going on. So as you can see from this, we had a little problem. The little problem was we ran out of hydraulic fluid, which means the ram um, to the starboard wasn't working, which means we had no rudder. And Uncle Chuck said in 30 years he has never had that happen to him, which got a little bit stressful because we don't have that much hydraulic fluid and we were doing circles. So we took the main down. Um, after the main was down, we put in some hydraulic fluid. We think there was an airlock or something, which is why the ram wasn't working. But it's working now. We're going both ways. Thank gosh we weren't in a pass when the rudder went, but a little bit, you know, you don't get scary. He's very chill, very laid back, but it was like, wow, what are we gonna do with no rudder? We were at 80 feet of water, so we would've just put the anchor down and try to figure it out. But this is what you have to do when you're on your own boat. You just point don't know is, what's going to happen. The point is to know your boat. Say that once more, the point is to know your boat. Every aspect of it. You have to, because when that goes down, it's like, oh crap, we have no steering which is why we did a little dance in the middle of the middle of the channel earlier pass Molly was brought onto White Knight too as a puppy, so this is just her home. She absolutely loves sailing and just chills. And after about six hours and some 360s, we were there. We're at Gibson's British Columbia. Yeah, I'm going. I drove the boat while Uncle Chuck put down the anchor. First thing you do when you get anchored is feed Molly. She is in desperate need of food. Molly's like, wait. She wants to do it outside. Molly, you're not going to eat? Yeah, outside. Oh. Outside where? Right here. It's fussy. Oh, you're being so fussy. Oh, water. Food! Were well, you not hungry yet? And in case you're wondering, Molly doesn't get fed or watered during passes, so she doesn't have to go pee or poo. Good girl. Morning from Gibson's. It is... I don't even know what day it is. It's a Friday. Anyways, it's absolutely beautiful here. Um, it's a bit clouded over, which... Seriously, we've had the sun almost every day, so it's kind of weird having the clouds. Had a good sleep last night in Chuck's Four Peak, except Chuck forgot to put on the snubber for me. Or let the chain out so it's rope. So if anybody hasn't slept in a Four Peak or in the bow of the boat, 
front of the boat without a snubber. Snubber is a piece of rope that takes the pressure off the chain or off the windlass. Um, because if it's wind, if it's the anchor just going right up the windlass, whenever the boat moves, you can actually hear the anchor go across the rocks. You can hear it pull. But we use a snower because we just take the pressure off our anchor in case our boat starts to pull. Um, but it's the sound. Josh, don't worry. We're getting you a snubber for your four peak. But Gibson's, yeah, it's it's beautiful. I think someone was having a party last night, or the bar was right there. And then we are going to take Miss Molly, the dog, on shore because she's probably going to have to go for a pee and go have breakfast. It's going to be awesome. And it wasn't long before we headed around. ashore and looked around the hometown of the Beachcombers. <laughs> You have a dog on a boat, she poops anywhere. Okay. Animals not permitted. There's a white knight. Wow, Gibson stands on an aquifer that produces the world's cleanest water. This walk tells it all. And the Billy Hill Picker Band is playing. And then it was time for breakfast at the infamous Beachcombers Molly's Reach. Hi. We have two outside. Seriously, you may think like Janice, you're making a big thing of this, but I grew up with the Beachcombers. My dad introduced me to the Beachcombers. I loved watching them and this whole BC Coast lifestyle. I think maybe that's what made me move out here. It's just watching it. So we're at Molly's Reach in Gibson's and I'm having breakfast. So yummy. After breakfast, it was time to do a bit of exploring. Christmas tune. <coughs> Let's do your pedals. 
That's all I got. <laughs> into the water under the bridge and Chuck is like really and I'm like I grabbed my phone so fast out of the pocket and chucked it in but I'm soaking wet I just fell into Gibson's Harbor <laughs> funny Chuck it was <laughs> and after my little impromptu swim it was time to head out just bringing up the anchor the warfinger just came by and said we we're too close to the dock but you know what we're heading to Squamish anyway so it's a perfect time to pull up the anchor lovely breakfast at molly's reach we walked around gibson very cool place and now i'm driving the boat so chuck can pull up the anchor i think we're just waiting for a gust or something i don't know and i just got a cup of tea because i might have fallen in the water coming out in the tender Shh. actually it was freaking hilarious Thanks everyone for watching my trip to Gibson's and me just kind of fulfilling my lifelong dream of seeing the Beachcomber's hometown. Join us next time as we head towards Squamish and we find some whales.